Joyful Sabbath friends, I'm Chris McLean, lead pastor at Shady Grove United Methodist Church. What a joy it is to be in worship with you. I hope that you have an opportunity to check out our electronic announcements or to look at our website and find opportunities where God is calling you to share, serve, connect. I hope that you sign in for worship so that we can rejoice in your presence. And if you're new among us, welcome. We welcome the chance to get to know you more and hope that you'll leave your name and contact information so that we could do just that. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. so bored. I wish I had something to do. <sighs> Thanks for letting me sleep in, kids. If you make a mess in the kitchen, please let me know so I can clean it up. Raising kids is so easy. I just love driving around all day. Oh, I never have to repeat myself. They always listen so carefully. Oh, look. An empty box of cereal. Love it. Just wipe it on your sleeve. It's pretty cold, but you don't need a coat. Oh, you don't have to push in your chair. Don't make your bed, you're just gonna sleep in it again later. I think I'll skip the coffee today. You know, these throw pillows look way better on the floor. I'm really not that busy. Well, you haven't showered in three days, but I think you smell great. We do have food at home, but let's just go out to eat. Just brush your teeth whenever you feel like it. Here, take my phone charger and go put it in your room. Oh, just leave your dirty dishes on the counter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all pull on our phones. Youth sports are so cheap. Braces are so cheap. School fees are so cheap. Hey, can you come crawl in bed with me around 2 a.m.? Thanks. Okay, I just spent two hours making dinner, but if you don't like it, that's fine. Just let me know and I'll make you something else. Don't even bother looking for that. I'm sure it's lost and gone forever. Can somebody please throw something at my head? I mean, I can keep track of every single one of your things. I get a ton of sleep. I get a ton of gratitude from my children. I get a ton of unsolicited help with the housework. Oh, you don't have to hurry up. We're gonna be right on time. Can someone please throw something at the TV? Thanks for doing the laundry, everyone. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you use your outside voice? Ah! Fight, fight, fight! The floor of this vehicle is so clean, I can't believe it. Oh, good. Another trip to the grocery store today. Let's go. shower. Does somebody want to come use the bathroom while I'm in here?
Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today for the children's moment. I'm so glad you're here. So, I have three letters here. Do you know what they stand for? B-F-F. -F. Right. Best friends forever. And I am very grateful for my BFFs, and I wanted to tell you about two of them this morning. I've known one of my BFFs since I was three years old. That's a long time. And we love to ride bikes together and swim in her father's lake and row a canoe and dream up all kinds of adventures. We grew up in the same church and we walked to school together and climbed trees and played in forts. Yes, Miss Kate loved to climb trees. We like to do a lot of the same things, but we also like to do a lot of different things. One of us likes sports and one of us not so much. One of us like dance and one of us not so much. And that was okay because we loved each other. And that's what friends do, right? Friends love each other. We even used a secret code and had a special language. We still call each other the names from our special language. I always call her a Rab Rab and she always calls me ETAC. You might be able to crack our code. A Rab Rab and I went to different colleges and live in different towns and really don't get to see each other very often. But she's the kind of friend I can call anytime and I know she'll be there for me to help me if she can. That's what friends do, right? Friends help each other. And I have another BFF who is always with me wherever I go and whatever I'm doing. This BFF has known me even longer than a Rab Rab has. This BFF helps me every time, all the time, when I'm sad or hurting and is always ready to listen and help. If you think that I might be talking about Jesus as being my best friend forever, then you're right. Jesus lives in my heart and Jesus is always with me. Did you get a Jesus like this one at your front door, delivered to your front door last week? Shady Grove delivered these Jesus friends to almost 200 children. If you didn't get one, please let Miss Kate know and I'll get you one. Friends are encouraged to take Jesus with them wherever they go and share pictures of their journeys on our own children's ministry private Facebook group. We've seen posts of Jesus at baseball games, bike riding, swimming, eating burgers, climbing trees, playing in the sprinkler, swinging, walking dogs, sleeping, reading, going to the river, chalk painting, blowing bubbles, and eating pancakes and ice cream sandwiches. Jesus is getting around, and it is exciting to be part of his journey. Jesus showed us how to love and gave us a very important commandment or job. Yes, Jesus gave us a job. Jesus told us to love each other as he has loved us. How much does Jesus love us? Right, so, so much we can hardly put it into words. And Jesus wants to be our best friend forever. I think that feels really special that Jesus wants to be our BFF, don't you? Can we remember the job that Jesus gave us? Right, y'all are so smart. Love each other. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for best friends who love us. Thank you for sending Jesus who showed us how to love each other. Please help us remember that Jesus is our best friend forever and wants us to love each other. Amen.
we come now to our scripture reading and we find ourselves in the New Testament, the fourth book in the New Testament, which is the Gospel of John. A gospel is the telling of the good news of Jesus Christ. And John is known as the spiritual gospel. So maybe you have a, a practical friend and then you might have a kind of spiritual friend and John is our spiritual gospel. And so here we start off chapter 15, verse nine, going through verse 17. Hear now the word of God. Jesus said, as my father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because the servant doesn't know what the master's doing, but I've called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I've heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I'm giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our message this morning is the rule of love. Let us pray. Holy God, we are surrounded by rules. We inhabit them, we follow them, we break them. And right now we lay them down before you and ask you, what is your rule? What is the way that you're calling us to live? We ask you because we trust you, for we know that your rule is love. Won't you shake that in us this day Amen. So you can tell by the prayer, I've been thinking about rules and I've been thinking about love. And thinking about those two things reminded me of two families I knew growing up, the Chen family and the Hall family. And I remember about the Chen family birthday parties. Um, their daughter would enjoy inviting the girls from school to her house to celebrate for a slumber party, her birthday. And I remember, uh, all kinds of things that we would hang and toss up on the ceiling fan and then turn on the ceiling fan and watch everything fly off into the room. And I remember the Chen's just being fine with that and just feeding us spaghetti for dinner. And I remember the Hall family sneaking in the side door of their garage into this cool cavernous dark space where they had a baby wading pool set up and in that pool, ducklings and a heat lamp shining down. And Mr. Hall had set that up so his kids could enjoy that life at Easter. And so Jesus says, as the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. As the father has loved me, how was that? At the Chen house, I. I saw love through birthday sleepovers. At the Hall House, I saw love through ducklings at Easter. How was it with Jesus? And we see in Jesus this habit he had of taking time apart to pray, not to just do some job called prayer, but literally to spend time with his father, his dad, to be loved by his father. And he came out of that relationship of love and that time spent with deep confidence because we see Jesus saying to his followers, I'll ask my father, my father will send the spirit. Jesus doesn't say, well, I'll, I'll ask dad and I hope he'll do it, but I'll ask him, he will. As the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. And then at the Chen family, I remembered some of the rules. 
one of the rules was they woke up at some version of 4 a.m. And at the Hall House, I remember that one of the rules was you got to get your chores done, do them right. That early wake up at the Chen's was to get to the pool before school. And dad was the one at the Hall House in charge of making sure all the chores were done. And I was always just a tiny bit afraid of Mr. Hall uh, because he was very tall and had a booming voice and he had a certain way of calling his kids names when they hadn't done their chores or hadn't done them correctly. And he was on it. Jesus says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and I abide in his love. And so how was it that the Chen and the Hall children kept their father's and mother's commandments? It was waking up early, being ready for the pool. It was chores done daily and done correctly. How was it with Jesus? We could spend a lot of time in the gospels really studying how Jesus kept his father's commandments. And probably one part will stick out most. Probably the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus is facing the reality of his coming death. And he says, Father, if you will, let this cup pass from me. Not what I want, but what you will. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And then Jesus says, hard to go from one to the other, right? When you think about what it costs Jesus, but, but here we come, the next verse. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And as I thought about a parent, love and commands and joy, these things together. I thought of my dad on a weekday when we had to go to the pediatrician. He's the one who'd take us. The reason is because he worked at the hospital where our appointment was. And so he wouldn't mess around with cooking us breakfast. He'd get in his uniform and we'd all get dressed. He'd put us in the car and we'd stop at 7-Eleven. I've probably told you before what my dad would do, that he would let us buy donuts and juice and all kinds of soda and sugary whatever, and we would just have a sugar bomb fest in his car on the drive from Virginia Beach to Portsmouth before we went to the pediatrician. And after we enjoyed this time with our dad doing whatever we wanted uh, with treats in his car and listening to NPR on the radio, we would arrive and he'd put on his hat and all of the Navy officers would salute him as he walked into the building. While we waited for our dad to work and waited for an appointment, um, to be perfectly honest, we spent most of our time pranking our dad. And um, well, stories for another day is all I can say. We did some pretty naughty things, pretty funny things that we like to share at family holidays. And so it was shocking to us who were busy, you know, on our sugar high pranking our dad to realize that our dad really was this commander. He was literally a commander for the early part of our childhood. And then he was a captain and commanding officer who got a special parking space at the commissary. And we enjoyed the parking space, but it really didn't occur to us what he was to people, someone who gave commands. We didn't realize that during the Gulf War, all of the people who served on the hospital ships of the Mercy and Comfort, those names passed across our dad's desk. We just didn't take seriously this commanding presence in our father, but we noticed at work that people really did experience him that way. And we would observe that and go back to his office and giggle about it. Not because we didn't respect him, but because we experienced his yoke as easy. That's how Jesus might have said it. Your yoke is easy. And so you think about an oxen uh, pulling a heavy cart, but our dad didn't put a heavy weight on us. He taught us a lot of things. 
Uh, he taught us how to build a clubhouse by building us a clubhouse and he built a swing set for us and he would work on plumbing and let us help and would teach the whole way. He made his own fiberglass fishing rods and taught us how to make the decorative threading and we could design our own fishing rod if we wanted to. My dad did these things with us. The only thing he didn't do with us is picking up sticks in the yard before mowing. That was clearly our job. And it was the one time where he said, just go do it. That was pretty much the extent of his commanding presence with us. We had a lot of things that we got to enjoy. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. So there it is. We've talked about rules and love at homes. We've talked about commands, the command of my father and how we experience that actually with great joy. Jesus' command is love one another. Can you command love? This is my commandment. Love one another. It's like saying to kids who've been in a fight, and I know people do this because it was said to me, and I say it to my kids all the time. I'll say to them, won't you two just get along? Get along. And, and we say this to people in the middle, you know, they're just antagonizing each other and egging each other on. And then we say, get along. Can we command love? It's a good question. And the best answer to the question for me was in my own childhood. I got told to get along when my parents weren't done somewhere. Maybe we were out at the stables and they had work still to do. And we kids were in the car goofing off and maybe arguing, and they said, get along. We had to sit in that car, stop fighting, change our posture to one another. And it didn't happen instantly, but once we started to hold ourselves accountable, just quit this fighting, quit the picking, quit the ugly talk, and then time would go by. Somehow in that something would change and we would become genuinely friendlier with one another once we got out of that conflictual state of mind. Somehow there are things we can be told to obey and in obedience, that action of doing the better thing we've been called to do, something can change in us. I want to share some words with you from Will Williman. He says it best. He says, sometimes in the contemporary church, we forget that we are not simply to love Jesus or even follow Jesus. We are also to obey Jesus. Obedience is not a favorite word in our freedom, loving, independent culture. And yet Jesus loves us enough to command us and we are called to love him enough to obey his commands. Christians are those who are not simply following Jesus because we have found Jesus to be a helpful means of getting what we want out of life. Christians are those who follow Jesus in obedience, confident that when we obey him, we are fulfilling what God wants to get out of the world. Christians are those who follow Jesus in obedience confident that when we obey Jesus, we are fulfilling what God wants to get out of the world. And Willman goes on to say, we are all obeying somebody. In the modern world, we answer to a number of masters, our peers, our family, our friends, the government, popular fads, our image of the good life. All of us are doing what we are told in some form or another. So maybe the issue is not, will I be obedient or disobedient, but which master will I obey? 
Christians are those who believe that in obeying Jesus, we find our true freedom, our true destiny, and abundant life. Jesus urges us obediently to love one another and to follow him so that the world may see him in us, so that the world might look at the way that we live together and know that he is truly Lord and Christ, the Savior of the world. Powerful words. As we obey and love one another, people can see in us what God hopes to get out of the world and show who Jesus really is, Savior of the world. And yet, Brennan Manning has said, the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and then walk out the door and deny him with their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. Jesus says, I do not call you servants any longer because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. Will they see Jesus in us? Will they see that love in us? The rule of love. It makes more sense than we think, love and command, those words together. Love and command go together like a daily 5 a.m. swim and slumber parties. It goes together like ducklings and chores, like donuts and picking up sticks, like prayer time and the cross. Love and command, somehow in the tension we find God, somehow in the tension of love and command, being parented into what God wants out of the world, we find ourselves transformed and moving into our destiny in God's love. And we find ourselves understanding Jesus, being able to call him friend as we grow in knowing him and obeying him. And in that living, we can bear fruit that will last. The fruit of the Chen's way of life is that their daughter was able to enjoy celebration party at Olympic trials. The Halls bore fruit in their children. One of their kids was able to run an incredibly successful restaurant, a place with many chores done correctly. Jesus left behind an empty tomb, bearing fruit for all of us, because now we know how to love and how to live without fear. And that life without fear is one where we know joy. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his. I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Love and commandments and joy. It sounds like an old hymn. I think some of you might be thinking it now with those ideas. I trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey that you are loved and there is a path of life where you can live fully and fruitfully and show what God means to get out of this world. 
trust and obey, not just listen, not just admire Jesus, not just consider some things he said, not just have feelings about Jesus, but imitate, follow, accompany, do, trust, obey. So that what will happen? Jesus says, so that we will love one another. That's one of those things, it sounds really easy until you have to sit in that car for a long time with no cell phones back in the 80s and just get along with your siblings in the heat of summer and no entertainment. Love one another, have you tried it? Maybe at work, maybe in traffic, wherever it is, where is it hard to love one another? It is easier said than done. My friends, God is not bashful in dreaming for creation and dreaming for us. And Christians are people who know that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is with us. And with Jesus, we can do this. With the Holy Spirit, we can do this. This is my commandment that you love one another. It's not my recommendation. It's my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. And we will find strength in Jesus' love to go about the work of loving, and we will find guidance in Jesus' commandments to go about living. As we do this, we find this joy. It's greater and bigger than any joy we've imagined. It's Jesus' joy that shows us what it is to have complete joy. Let Jesus' joy be in you, and let it be complete. With God's help, friends, go and show the world what it looks like to love one another and bear much fruit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to our prayer time, I invite you to look around you, probe your experience of God's world. Where around us are we seeing resurrection? And where around you are you seeing the need of it? with those joys and those concerns together. Let us join in a prayer written by Will Williman. I'm on a Will Williman kick lately. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in your resurrection, you trampled down death and triumphed over Satan, giving birth to your church and opening to all the doors of the kingdom. Strengthen us in our various ministries that in serving you, we might please you and that in obeying you, we might witness to the world that you are Lord, that you will reign and that you will triumph forever. Give us the wisdom to know your way. Give us the courage to follow your way. Give us the grace to be content in your way and teach us to pray. As we pray the words your son offered to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
receive now this blessing as you head into a new week with God. May the God who seeks you find you when you fall. May the God who loves you take delight in your living. May the God who sends you send you now with joy. For in your gladness and in your grieving, in your brokenness and in your healing, in your faithfulness and in your leaving, the God who created you and redeemed you keeps you still. Amen. <laughs>